Hey everyone, I'm back with another tutorial today. Um, today I'll be teaching you a bit about integers, um, converting integers to strings, and teaching you how to make a slot machine in 5 to 10 minutes. Let's get started. So we want to make a new project in um, Visual Studio. We'll, you can name whatever you want. Again, um, we'll call this one slot machine. And again, this is a very basic slot machine. There could be better things, there could be worse. <clears throat> Alright, we want to add three picture boxes to start off with. Uh, position them how you want and change the size of them. So I'm just going to make them small and put three of them side by side. Uh, one, one more thing we need to do is click on all three of the picture boxes. Click this little button up here and change the size mode to zoom. Okay. Now we want to add three labels. So, label. The first label is going to specify how many credits we have. The second label is going to specify the bet. The third label will specify the win. And you can go ahead and change them to the following. So label 3, we'll change it to win. Label 2, we'll change it to bet. And label 1, we'll change it to credits. Okay, now we want to add one button, and this is basically it for the UI, so there's not too much more to do. Like I said, this is a very small video. Um, a lot of people struggle to understand how this works and how quickly you can actually make a slot machine. And we'll make this spin. Okay, I'm just going to move all these up a bit to about there and make my, my form a bit smaller. Okay, that is basically it for the UI. Actually, we're going to have a set limit of credits, so when we open the application, we'll have 100 credits. So we don't have to worry too much about labor, it will get changed as the code gets updated. Uh, make about $5, and the win, start this off with zero. Okay, so when we open the application, this is how it will look. Well, not really, but yeah, the picture, box, the picture boxes are blank, but we'll add that. So, what we want to do now is double click on the form to make a form load object. Um, here's some code from um, my previous, uh, my other program. It's, a, it's, also a, it's also a paper machine. I'll show you a quick, quick run through of that. Documents, Visual Studio, Projects. And poker machine. This is an illegal poker machine. Um, it is not going to be distributed or will it ever. Um, it's just something I made for fun. This is what my poker machine looks like. Press the spin button. As you can see, it functions like a proper poker machine with the proper pay table, etc. Okay, <clears throat> now back to what we're doing. Okay, now the form, the form one load. Before I get you to do this, I'm gonna get you to download three PNG files from the internet. You can go on Google. Um, you can choose three images that you like. It doesn't really matter what they are. Make sure you save them as one PNG, two PNG, and three PNG. We'll be using these for the pictures and to generate um to generate the the actual images. After that, you want to copy all three of them. You want to go to Documents, Visual Studio 2015, Projects, and find what your poker machine is called. Then go into the slot machine folder, then go into the bin, then go debug and paste them in there as 1PNG, 2PNG, sorry PNG. Now in the Form 1 load, to get these, these images as um, the form is loaded, we want to paste this code in there, which sets picture box 1 to 2, picture box 2 to 3, picture box 3 to 1. You can really change the order of them. Here. 
difference. This is nothing. This is just when we open the program, they pop up. For some reason, the second one isn't popping up. So we'll find out why. Books. Ah, here we go. Sorry. Because we have to change all three of these to Zoom. Sorry, I, I mustn't have selected them properly before. But as I was saying, change all three of them to Zoom. Start it. And so far, that's what we have. The spin button doesn't work. Um, doesn't deduct anything. So yeah. Back into the form. Now what we want to do, before the form unload. Here's where integers and other stuff like that come into it. An integer is a number. An integer is a data type um, that stores numbers. Whereas a string type, like this, for example, uh, string. If you want to, if you want to add a sentence or something into a, to a very, you need to declare it as a string, and set it to. What if you, you can write blah 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 blah. As long as you wrap it in quotes, it'll recognize it as a string. But here you have to declare the string name, so we'll call it string blah. So here we're declaring a string. Here we're declaring a four. We're equaling it to this here. Declaring a pop up. So if you go to use the string, um, the quotes won't pop up. Um, you just have to wrap it in quotes so the program doesn't recognize it as separate commands or, or phrases. We don't need strings in this one anyway. Oh, we do, but towards the end. Okay, so now we want to declare the total, the bet, and the credits. You can change this to whatever you want. You can change the bet to whatever you want, and the credits to whatever you want. The total win, we don't have to use that at the moment, so we don't have to change it. We'll just set it to zero. The total win should always be zero up here when you declare it. So you see why I inserted 100 up into here, and 5 into the bet. <clears throat> now, here is where we declare each item. The way I have my system worked out, I make sorry I declare three integer integers, and then I have over here. Let me find it. The integers that are generated from one to three will load that specific picture. So it is completely randomized. You can't actually do much with it if you're trying to hack it or whatever. So yeah, we'll declare integers. Uh, you don't have to send anything because I'll be set on the spin button. So we declare three integers, P1, P2, and P3. Okay. Now we want to add a system that generates random numbers. I'm not going to go too much into this. This is actually a big topic in um in the development scene. It is quite hard to do actually, and people actually do classes on completely random numbers. Uh, for some reason, it's very, very, very hard to generate random numbers from a computer. Um, I'm not sure how this method works, but it works, you know? So we'll just copy that bit of code under the form one load. Okay. Where are we at now? Okay, so now this is the final part of the actual procedure. We want to we want to load the, the um, button click event for the spin button. So go ahead and double click on that. Now, <clears throat> for the spin button, we first we want to check if the credits are higher than the bet. So if you've got more credits, say if um, you've got like 10 credits and it's higher than 5, which is a bet, it will execute the code. If not, it will do nothing. So for example, I paste that in there. Add another curly bracket so we don't get an error. And now all the code we want to execute, it, only if we have um, more credits than the bet, we will store in here. So first thing we want to do is actually update your credits to minus a bet. So first we paste this in here. We have the total credits equals credits minus bet. So our credits are set to 100 and our bet is set to 5. So 100 equals 100 minus 5, and that'll update the credits to 95. That's just an example. The program does everything itself, so you don't have to worry too much about that. After that, we want to update the label, the credits label. Here we go. Here's where you learn a bit. 
Okay, first we want to update label one, which is credits. We want to update it to we add a string here because the text is actually a string. So everything in here has to be string form. So we add the credits. Um, I just add a little semicolon, um, uh, a column and a space. And here is a plus symbol, which means this string plus this is what we want it to be. You can add like plus whatever you like. You can really, you can really change it. Um, here we we want to get the credits. Um, we want to get the credits integer, but because we can't store integers in like, string data, we have to convert the credit to string. Fortunately for us, to convert an integer to a string is very easy. We just type credit or whatever your integer is, plus two string, and that'll convert it to a string. Here is a number generating system. <clears throat> okay, I'm not going to explain too much about the for loop. This is just um, this is just um how, how to loop it. This is just the loop, so it, it repeats for it for each one. Um, but I can explain this part. We want to set our p1, which is our picture one, our picture two, and picture three. To a random number declared here between 1 and 4. So this can be 1, 2, or sorry, it will not reach 4. I think it's just the way the code is um, made. So we, if we want to only end up as um, the highest number be 3, we set this as 4. So if you want it to be 5, like the highest number to be 5, well then you set this to 6. And that will store P1, P2, and P3 as completely random numbers from 1 to 3. Okay. <clears throat> now, here's where the picture boxes get updated. Right, let me explain this. <clears throat> when we have an image in a picture box, it stores the image in a cache. Um, the cache is actually quite small for a program. And you'll get errors if you don't dispose the picture, which means free the, um, free the image from the cache. So what I want to do is, if picture box, the image, equals nothing, uh, sorry, does not equal nothing, we will dispose the image in picture box 1. So we repeat that process for 2 and 3. And down here under this, we want to set picture box 1, image, to an image from a file stored locally, which is the image inside our debug folder. You have to place these inside the debug folder because the program actually opens inside this folder, and if it's anywhere else, it will not find that image and you'll be thrown with a random error. So <clears throat> we want to load the image from file. Um, so how does it know which image to actually load to match the, the same variable? We want to just add the p1 integer in here to string, so it will convert it to a string, and then it will add .png on the end, so you know, say for example, p1s end up p1 ends up to randomize to number three. It'll load three .png. Same with picture box two and picture box three. <clears throat> That's basically the explanation from them. Okay, after that, we want to. We want to set the total win to zero. <clears throat> we do this on every spin because if we don't set the total to zero, the way I have my system set up, it'll keep on adding on, so you can end up winning a million coins. It's pretty stupid, but yeah. <clears throat> okay, it's just a quick pay table I generated. There are much neater ways of doing this, but I'll paste this in here and I'll explain it to you quickly. PNG, um, our total win will be 5. Um, that's only for one one box, so if that one equals number 3, we get 5 credits. <clears throat> now, 
if picture box 1 and picture box 2 equal 2, you win 10 credits, which is my second highest paying variable. So if these two equal number 2, the spade in the box will be save. That will pop up in picture box 1 and picture box 2. Then we win this much, 10. And if picture box 3 as well, same for that. Um, that's only for two occurrences, so if one occurrence of three, we win five credits. Two occurrences of two and three, we win ten credits. Um, and here is three occurrences. So, if, if picture box one equals one, picture box two equals one, and picture box three equals one, we, we win twenty credits. So that's basically how the system works. Um, I'll space it out a bit just to make it a bit easier to understand. And the occurrences work from left to right. Adding a completely random way of doing this would actually take quite a bit of time. So you can imagine how Poker Machine developers actually feel. Um, my original code for that big red um, Poker Machine, there's 700 lines of just the pay table, so it does take quite a bit. There are probably neater ways of doing it, but I just made a simple way. <clears throat> and finally, we want to add our credits. Here, we declare how many credits we won, we add them onto the credits, so first line is our credits equal the original amount of credits plus our total win. Here we just update the win and the credits label, so label 3 which is our win, dot text is what we want to change, we change it to win plus total win because it's an integer we have to convert it back to string. Thank you label 1 do the exact same thing, but because we've already declared credits as new, um, all we really have to do is add our credits to two string. After that, the program is done. We can actually have some fun with it now. So we spin, change them. Say we won 40. Spin, we won nothing. Because those are the two, these are least paying objects, so you need at least three of them to win something. Two of them equals 10 credits, one of them equals none, so yeah, and that's it guys, hope you had fun with this tutorial, enjoy.